Hello people, I want to make today's a quick one, so I won't waste your time, I'll go straight to the point. And uh, basically, th this video is a wake-up call, and I'm going to tell you why. It's about temporal forces. As you can probably already tell, we're going to compare temporal to Poldia and Chilin Rain. I already made a video about the comparison with Poldia and Chilin Rain, but we'll go over that again. And I'm basically going to try to give you something to think about and uh, try not to listen to the, the noise around Pokemon investing nowadays, but try to focus on uh, actual facts and uh, most importantly, what is going on in the Pokemon market these days. So, temporal forces, the point I want to make is, look at Poldia. So, Poldia is the most expensive main set of SMV if we talk about booster boxes. It's around $130, $120, 115 euros in the U. And uh, we're looking at TCG prices here. I gotta say, prices in the US are higher than in the U. The main reason is the market is much hotter than in the US than in the U. It also has to do with the culture thing. In the US, people are more used to flip cards and this culture of making money and uh, you know a capitalist country, which also is the, the people in the European Union where Western countries well, were the capitalist country. But I think it's more a, a American thing the, the fact of I gotta make money, I gotta find a, a way, a hustle to make money. Prove me wrong, I, th I, I think this way, this is my opinion, but I also think one of the reasons why this is what's happening that in the US prices are higher. Nevertheless, I wanna make a point. So many people look at the price, I don't like to say the value and as the price. I have a big thing about price, talking about price and value. I'll make a video on it. Long story short, uh, in a nutshell, value is what you get, price is what you pay. So I don't value Magikarp at $120, or the market is pricing Magikarp at $120. Now, it's a whole different thing. You can measure value with price, that's a whole different thing, but I don't want you to confuse the two. Value is one thing, price is another. So the price of the top 10 cards, which is, I, I say it's uh, one thing many people look at, now, one thing, big thing, if you only, if you're only, let's call it invest indicator, is let's look at the price of the top 10 cards in the set, then I think you're extremely stupid. I'll tell you why. First of all, I mean, with that logic, if you look at black and white era, you know, booster boxes should be basically $120 if, if you go with that logic. Plus, like, realistically, when it comes to investing in sealed, yes, it, it does play a big thing that there's so many external factors apart from the price of the singles in the set that uh, you, not considering them, I think it's just stupid. Nevertheless, if we do take a look at those, so top 10 goes here until bosses order, and uh, I did the math, you can check me. The For PE, you have a total of $420. Now, I did the same for the last sold and shield set main set obviously i'm talking about silver tempest if you do the math so the first 10 cards in the set you sum up their market price as of today june 9th it comes down to 430 dollars you do that for temporal 460 so if you only look at the price of the top 10 cards in the set and you i mean you rank the top 10 based on price temporal forces winning now you can argue Barrett, well, Raging Ball is played, it's spiked up, and then there's market manipulation, so on and so forth. Yes, Raging Ball was in the mid 50 to 60, it went up to 90s, I'm not going to argue that. However, we're talking facts, Those, these are the facts. If you look at top 10 price, these three sets, Temporal Forces as the lowest price when it comes to booster boxes, and yet the highest price when it comes to top 10 singles. Now, I'm not going to stop there. One thing I want to say is, and uh, this especially I think holds true for Tempest. Look at Tempest. You go look at the top 10 cards in terms of price, and it goes all the way down here to this Vulpix V-Star. Now, look at them. Look at them. Okay. So, and then look at the top 10 cards when it comes to Temporal, okay, so all the way down here. Let's say you open a box 
of Tempest and a box of Temporal. How many cards out of Tempest? And let's try to be as objective as possible. When it comes to artworks, would you rather pull one of these or one of these? In my humble opinion, I only want to pull the Lugia, the Requiza, and on, let's say, let's call Lugia, S tier, this ray, A tier, and B tier, the Unknown and the Regi Drago. If we took a look at Temporal, out of these 10, Bolt, Crown, Leaves, Gudgeon Fire, and Walking Wake, all these four, and Ghastly, between S tier and A tier, and then I would put Iron Boulder, Bianca Devotion, Morty, and Airy somewhere in B tier. But would I be happy with any of these 10? Yes, 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 I would. Would I be happier than if I pulled any of these 10 apart from the Lugia? Yes. If I pull the Lugia, not gonna lie, I'll be happier than if I pull any of these 10 cards. If I pull anything but the Lugia, I'd rather pull any of these cards. So remember that. And then, last but not least, I want to make this comparison with Chilling Rain. So with Chilling Rain, you add what I like to call the remake of the three birds. You have Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos in Galarian version, which was obviously unique to the Sword and Shield era. What do you have on Temporal? You have, again, forgive me the word, a remake of the Legendary Beasts, Legendary Dogs, call them whatever you want, and Tei, Sukun, and Raikou. And then you had the introduction of the Shadow Riders, which was a new game dynamic. What do you have here? Future Pokemon in the dress of Iron Crown, Iron Leaves, and Iron Boulder. Not only that, let's, let's scroll down on uh, Chilling Rain, which has... 13 alt arts. So once you go to the second page, you basically have the secret rare version of the alt art as well as some other Pokemons. But if you go down here, you have the illustration rares, which in this set are, as you can see here, 22. Poor rate is about for a specific one, one out of 250 to 52, and uh, there's on average three per box. So yeah, obviously the gas which is most expensive so you could argue it's the one with highest demand as pull rates are potentially equally distributed but you have the Sawbuck, Chinchino and then you go on page number two which is going to be filled with illustration rares you have the Metagross, Arbok, Deerling, you have Drampa, Minchino, Shiftree, Lickitung, Relic. So you see the point I'm making you have awesome artworks of Pokemon that are well known and you have a box which is what hundred dollars you can probably find it for less and yet most of the focus is on PE most of the attention is on singles including also some of singles within temporal forces not gonna lie but again if you try to make money you gotta look and seek for value where no one else is looking and I'll try to make a video on it which is basically going to be how I was able to profit buying certain single because they fit some of my criteria, which again, I'm going to explain in a dedicated video. So stay tuned for that. But again, pull the Evolve 130, Silver Tempest is what, 150? I think it's a, still on the Pokemon Center, but it's selling for what, 150, 160 on TG Player. And uh, you have this at $100 and probably you can find it for less. I'll try to make my point. Hope you agree with me. If you don't, let me know why. And as always, I would highly appreciate it if you subscribe as well if you leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I'll be seeing you in the Discord. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.